Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. In this episode, we're gonna um, take a look on how Sphere Chalk can be used to modify lattice. Um, so yeah, this the result looks something like this. So basically, we know that lattice is one of the deformer that we can use in Blender. And the way lattice work is like you make first you make the lattice box and then um, the lattice box is always looking like a box and then you connect it to the mesh using modifier, lattice modifier and you kind of select the lattice object and it's just gonna work like that um, it's very very simple um, but here what's interesting is that the lattice points are being deformed using scratch off and this is just a one way to do it and then I'm currently using the the nodes that's still pretty alpha I think still but still can be really powerful um, and it's slightly a little bit more technical than usual um, but it's really really interesting that um, you can actually access the lattice data and then kind of modify it um, here if I go through the nodes really quick it's not so big but still kind of long so here I have this um, object and lattice and kind of um, get the objects uh, type of lattice this is actually selecting all the lattice object if I have a um, few of these uh, lattice objects everything's gonna be moving that way oh no actually only that guy okay anyway um, from that lattice objects I get all the data points and this is how you do it using object ID set and then using another object ID set I go into inside of each points and get the coordinates and the coordinate is like the default uh, of the lattice point uh, positions and then using socket converter let's join blah 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 and then I finally pipe it in into the coordinate deform this is how we can deform a lattice and yes it's a, like a foyer into more technical stuff and then I only but this is good because kind of started um, digging this using Python as well even though still like super super basic uh, but I'll try um, to explain this from scratch if I fail I'm gonna go back into this file this is thanks actually to cost for cost for um, give me an idea on how to do this currently it might get better and easier uh, over time but this is like the alpha version but I, I like how it can dig inside the any type of uh, object in a uh, in blender it's just a different way to thinking about uh, square chalk but because normally originally I think spray chop works in um for modeling and and then and then there's a there's a script node i think by i think zephy works on that and then with script node you can use python and then there's a script node sn light which you can um it works a little bit um slightly different but simpler than the script the original script node for spray chops and spray chop itself which um, like it's like a the the way it works with lists and how it's wrapped list and then or list of offer list over list and then you work with multiple lists all the time it's always very interesting for me I think maybe but anyway um, while with animation nodes um, the, the the way of thinking is slightly different with animation nodes maybe simpler if you if you just started using add-on like animation nodes or spread chop, you can kind of use both. The animation nodes should be simpler for simple stuff like um, object transform is a uh, one of the easiest. Grab an object, I drop the on object, and then just use a object transform output and you can you know 
play around with the location, rotation, and scaling, use wiggle and whatnot. Now, the only downside of animation nodes is somehow it's slower when the node three is on. Uh, but if I if I turn off, if I hide the node three, it's gonna be faster. That's the only thing. That's why I, I kind of choose Sphere Chalk because Sphere Chalk is currently heavily being developed as well. Um, yeah. Anyway, we're not gonna be using animation nodes. We're gonna be using Sphere Chalk, and then we're gonna try to transform objects that way. It's safely to say we can use object ID for that. Um, take a look at object ID out mk2 this guy can grab an object and then outputting all the the usual mesh data and whatnot this is one way you can work in spread job so there are a few different ways normally I use objects in mk2 all the time this is um, slightly more friendly I guess you can have multiple objects and get selections you can get from group and yeah this is the official one this is slightly different um, I wonder if this guy works together yeah apparently they work together as well this is a uh, pretty interesting so object ID is uh, currently alpha but you can you can easily get and set object object get object id get this one actually will grab all the objects of type mesh if we have like the monkey um, monkey and all these objects uh, name cube something cube cube 001 cube 002 if I just plug this guy in there and then use uh, like a random um, random vector plug that in there and you notice it jumps see all of them now is kind of being influenced by the random because what's happening is the random value goes into the delta location of these objects the delta of location is usually how you store uh, the extra value while this can be zeroed out the location the or what I mean is if I select all these objects and then zero out the locations, Alt G. Now they are all in the in the zero zero zero. But you you see the delta locations is kind of dirty. It has value and all the same. If we, if if I increase the number of random vector here like to four, now we can see the object has different value on the delta location. So they're slightly offset. But we can always offset it like normally, and then we have this kind of effect. I I really like this kind of workflow. Um, the delta allocation is almost like a original positions, while this guy is kind of offset on top of it. And actually, this guy is the offset, but the one that's animator can control. That's the what you want them to kind of animate on. So the procedural thing is working on top of the or uh, what the animators can control so that's nice and this is working on the object directly okay normally if you if you if you've been used um, if you've been watching my live noting video and then you see me doing this kind of thing get selection let me save this real quick this is object ID basic and then I've been using like viewer draw and see this is how I do it before um, and this is actually like a new object being created not the original object but with the object ID you it directly works on the objects transform the, like the original objects this one this one doesn't this one actually creates a new kind of a um, object mesh 
and the cool thing is they both can work on top of each other so this guy is controlling the original original object transform if I update this and then this guy works inside of the mesh and then you can do like randomize input vertices and more kind of neat stuff on top of this and if you want to have like a random seed of course you need to do like a range integer start step maybe I think this is count of four start step range to the seed now 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 this guy have different seed And if you also saw me do using the BMesh MK2, you'll see that's the result, which is a different object, which is okay because uh, you have the original object and then you're doing all kind of this mesh processing and you wanted a different output, you, you want to keep the original. So anyhow, um, let's get back to object ID. Alpha is the output of BMesh MK2. We can select um, select by pattern, select pattern alpha, and delete. Okay, back to the original objects. So like I said again, with the Currently, with the object ID get, you get all the objects, but you can use um, object filter, object ID filter, plug in the objects into the objects and the mask. It says name, just put in the name like Q. And instead of selecting four, it's filtering it out. Oh, objects actually have Q in the name. So we're just gonna be modifying the objects with the that name then the cube see the monkey get left alone so if, if I write then Sue Suzanne so I'm just moving the monkey that's a one way to do it again I remind you this is still an alpha node I believe uh, I don't know uh, I think cost four is the the one that can explain it really really well I just I really like it actually even though it's more complex because you you kind of need to specifically say okay you want to filter out objects with name Suzanne okay and then you specify okay you want to modify the delta location okay fine you can also modify the location of course and then that's gonna give a different effect because now we are controlling the actual lo locations you can also put in I think rotation Euler see this is very interesting uh, normally uh, you don't get to do that quite easily. See, it's even scale. And you can specify scale X, scale Y, scale Z. So there's a lot of, um, I guess, in order to do this um, a bit easier, you have to be in the, in the like a programming minded and you have to know kind of the attribute okay the name the this is filtering out by the object name this one okay set it to the scale um, index 0 you can set it to scale index 2 which is the the Z see this guy now being controlled by this guy so this is very interesting okay anyway now let's work with the lattice Create a monkey, monkey object, Suzanne, and create a lattice object. So lattice and monkey, uh, gonna scale the lattice. I'm not sure if the scaling actually applying it. Maybe I should apply the scaling. So now it's reset. Lattice has these options, U, V, W for the divisions of the lattice. You can set it to the outside only or with the inside as well. So it's up to you. 
we're just gonna work with a 2 by 2 by 2 lattice simpler and then currently it doesn't work yet I need to select the monkey object and then assign a lattice so select monkey lattice modifier and then specify the lattice objects now this guy is already being deformed which is uh, interesting I didn't expect that anyway the way uh, the lattice works really it's a uh, you normally you go to edit mode and then you kind of make modification there and then in the object level you uh, you can kind of move this guy yeah it's a it's an interesting um, deformer um, actually if I, I I use I use Maya before and lattice in Maya is really powerful for this for animations for for beginners and then because they can easily deform an object that way I believe in blender in order to animate lattice normally you want to create like a vertex parenting on locator so kind of mm, you have a locator that can control the lattice objects in the object level but now we want to do it using SpreadJob anyway so let's do the basic gonna delete all this leave this one get the object type lattice okay now we have access to the lattice I think if we use stethoscope we already know we can see the data okay we are sourcing the BPY data objects name late uh, it's type of lattice name lattice and that's you can see in the Python console so if you uh, we have to know a little bit of BPY and then you want to access the lattice data At lattices with S we have it says okay BPY collection one blend data lattice we want to access the lattice position I'll save it to my lattice a variable called my lattice now my oops so my lattices have the data of every lattices but my lattice is zero index zero is this guy and then we can access the point I believe points points u points v points w so I can access the points deploy that data let's points and I want to access the points um, let's see point zero and then I can check the coordinates so currently it's minus 0.5 minus point zero point five minus zero point five XYZ and we can also access the deform the deform is what I'm interested in so if I make this like three four five just a random value here you see it move just now I just control it using the Python BPY it's a it's a I guess some people like it this way you know you have access to everything using a uh, typing because if you're a programmer you like this but I rather using nodes it helps me to understand what's going on so with this guy, we, I can okay pipe in the objects there. It's gonna get all the lattices, and then I can say okay get all the lattices points. I believe ah, it's actually complaining. Objects has no attribute point. Let's save this. I think it's a data dot points. Cool. It's actually yeah data dot points even though it doesn't say here points data let's have a look so now 
it's getting all the points 0 1 2 3 4 this is we, we can see there are eight points if I increase this into a different number and updates so we have 3 by 3 by 3 9 27 see 27 just leave it back into 2 2 2 update now okay we have access to the all the points but we want to access the C O T form I'm gonna use object ID set once again and then here I'm gonna specify call D form now originally I was doing it like this call D form and then I get this uh, vector and this is actually a tuple and a tuple of vector points this we cannot work using scratch off we need to kind of get get it this way now this is a uh, data that scratch can work on not the bpy dot data um, if I'm not wrong we can just use a um, random vector here and plug it in into the lattice in order to modify the points you see the lattice points <coughs> lattice points now it's randomized using this random vector mk2 okay that's a uh, cool um, but we don't want it to be just random we want it to be like we want it we want the lattice to be in the original position first of all and the original position is uh, something we can access using the CO coordinate so it's kind of like if we kind of uh, query that CO in here I think we can do it this way That's a uh, you see here in the BPY, my lattice is the first lattice in the collection of lattice point zero index zero is at minus zero point five on x x y z. You can also specify point two three four five. They are all in the default position. You can in Python in Blender you can also do it like this for all for point in my lattice is dot points print point dot co that should work okay this specific this is gonna give the or the default value the original value of the points I like to do that to our setup here so I'm gonna use I'm gonna get and query the CO and just pipe it into the COD form. COD form. Am I doing it right? Maybe I did. Oh yeah, I did so. See? Now our lattice is back to original position. Now we want to be able to use vector math and deform it from the original position. Now this surprised me that it doesn't actually work yet because look at this number 8 and 1 this is a fair chop so fair chop is very interesting the way it stores data so if you look at the data currently in, from here so obviously there's an error here cut it see it's like like this the bracket it needs to be double bracket that's like uh, level 0 or level 1 so we need to join 
the data and hopefully hopefully it will work oh actually I'll just check the data first before I plug anything data points that are CO I think this is what we need join level list level one and then Still, still doesn't quite work. Um, I'll check my sheet setup. So we have object ID set, code forms coming in from the points. All right, <clears throat> code form. COD form doesn't have this guy. Join level list one and wrap. I wonder if I just plug that in. It works. Scalar, multiple scalar. This should work. So join level level one with wrap. With wrap off doesn't work. Ah, socket converter. Socket converter, I forgot. This is why I say it. it's still con a little bit complex and convoluted, but it's interesting anyway. Now hopefully this works. Okay, cool. This works. Socket converter. What see? This data originally looks like that. Now after socket converter, it looks like this. And stretch off like this. Doesn't like this type. Um, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe it's confronting the, the, the vector data stuff. Anyway, now it's working. Um, let me clean up. Let me explain one more time. This one, this one grab all the lattice, and then this one get the data points of the lattice, and then this one get the original coordinate, and then we need the socket converter and then list join currently in order to get the to the data that's fetch up like, and we can modify directly. This is the final CO deform attribute that we want to modify. Okay, let's zero this out. What's happening if I use using random vector mk2 a count of 8 plug into this guy. We are randomizing the lattice which is very very cool and yeah I don't, I don't know how you could do this normally um, you could um, say with the lattice if you use add modifier and use a um, you can actually use soft body to the lattice and make it soft and then affect it by turbulence and stuff but this one you have control procedurally and there's a modifier like so deform armature so you can deform lattice using armature as well and you can use another lattice to deform it um, all kind of stuff that's available here but now in stretch off you can actually control let's say if I just give a count of four 
still deforming the lattice, but only four points being deformed. So random value is cool. But let's say you don't want it to be too random, you want to use like a um, vector noise. Vertices for the vertices we can use the I believe this guy. Oh, it's actually complaining, doesn't like it. Maybe this guy. Okay, that seems to work. But we want to offset the vector noise, so we use the vector math. Kind of pushing it in time. Frame. Plug into the X or Y or Z. Okay. It's too fast at the moment, so we can multiply it by 0 0.1 for example now we have Suzanne head being deformed by the lattice and the lattice being deformed by spread chop very cool rather complex but you know it like I said it's gonna be simpler over time but I like it how this is very very uh, easy to understand how you can kind of okay look at the data points of the lattice and then get to coordinates this is the default coordinates and on top of that you offset the original coordinate value with the random vector noise that you give and then pipe everything in into the final C or D form and you can of course do vector math and kind of control the scalar the strength of the noise here see very cool and then it, you can even change the number of lattice you know like make it 5 by 5 by 5 and everything still works Pretty interesting and you can change the noise the type of noise Voronoi or maybe cell noise that's kind of stepping stepping in time I can hide the lattice see very interesting and increase the strength or reduce it and then use a Vorono standard Perlin of course it's almost like the character is underwater and everything works together with Blender on modifier because we are basically what we are doing here all this kind of weird thing um, is something that you can do using Blender BPY Python anyway but you're kind of doing it in node base spread chalk has its own way to do it you can actually set this up using animation nodes as well I believe so if you use like object attribute output and then but here here we don't have a lattice we don't have a way to get to the lattice um, you need to use script node that's why with spread chalk is currently like this is um, nice I'm gonna save the this into the gis and then you can check it out um, if you have any comments feedbacks you can leave it down below okay basically this setup currently um, with the tree and stuff will change. Okay, we might it might change, but if you like I said, if if you look, check it in the uh, Python Blender Python BPY, and then you if you can do it using BPY, and then you you can transfer the idea into into nodes this way. It's, suddenly, it makes more sense. Like I said, this is not simple by any means. However, it's a uh, it's needed because we are getting to the medium intermediate level. I'm glad that this is 
much easier for my brain. It used to be hard to do this, but if you think this is still too hard, don't. You can watch the older live nodding video. With this one, with the object ID get, you can get to the everything, everything in Blender. Get the object type of everything. You can modify anything with set. Okay, this is really powerful. Oh, by the way, this this kind of a like a bracket. This is like a list that's accessing um, everything. It's a common thing uh, in a in a Python Python and slicing list slice. So this will help you to understand Python better, BPY better, and Spreadshock better at the same time. Uh, yeah. Anyway. That's pretty much it in this live nodding. I'll see you in the next live nodding video, hopefully. Um, thank you for watching again. Um, I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time.